<coughs> here we are given the price of the stock, and we are asked if we are to sell the stock in four years, what would be the capital gain, the dividend yield, and all those other stuff. So there are three formulas that you need to remember. And after that, it just becomes cal calculating the future value and the price at time four. So we'll draw the diagram again. So this is time four, five, six. So the future value at time four is just the present value of P0 accumulated for four years. And the price we have computed from before is just 102.8. A3 at the beginning, and accumulation for four years is just multiplying by the interest rate to the power of four, so that's just the future value, it's a simple one. And the other one is the price at time four. Price at time four, we use the dividend discount model again, so we need to calculate all future dividends. So in particular, we need the dividends at time five, time six, and so on. So remember, time five dividend is the earnings, which is this, from before, times the dividend payout ratio, which is 80%, so that's the amount of dividend. And similarly, for year 6, it's just this, this squared, and this, and so on. So in year 7, you just change this 2 to 7, I mean 2 to 3. So again, you use that perpetuity formula. So I'll draw the diagram again. This is x, this is x1 plus 3, this is x1 plus 3 squared. So here, the x is just everything except for the 1.02. And G, R is 0 0.06 as before, and G is 0 0.02, because starting from next period, next period is just this thing multiplied by 1.02, which becomes squares. So that's why this would be G, and this would be R. Let's erase it so it's not confusing. So this number, whatever this number is, 118.08, is our P4. And then go back to to these three formulas. You can calculate all the gains and something yield. For example, capital gain yield is just capital gain divided by P0, and dividend yield is just dividend gain divided by P0.